Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to today's service. Today's service is normally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. We're in Qatar, Good Shepherd Friday. So our focus is on Jesus, the Good Shepherd, today. We also welcome the visitors, and especially the Mace family, who are with us here today, as we come to baptize Daniel Edward Mace. Very good, significant middle name, Edward. Uh, some of us share that as well. Folks, please stand now as we come to join the service. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So in a time of quiet, let us come before the face of God as we confess our sins. And we join together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen in all goodness, and keep in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the collect prayer together, which reminds us and focuses us on the Good Shepherd today. Good Shepherd, you are the gate that secures the sheepfold. Grant that all who hear your voice may know you who calls us each by name and follow where you lead. For you live and reign in the unity of the Blessed Trinity, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Anas, the high priest, was there, and so, far, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today 
for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, <coughs> sorry, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the first epistle of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 24. 1 John 3, 16 to 24. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions, and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask, because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we sing the psalm that was set for today. Please stand as we sing The Lord's My Shepherd as our song before the gospel reading. Mm -hmm.
Listen to the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 10, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm delighted to greet you in Jesus' name this morning to the worship. And God is so good and He's kind enough to each one of us. In God's presence, we have comfort and joy. God is good all the time because He is good. This is what reflected in today's gospel passage that was read to us. It describes the nature of God in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ is the embodiment of God's love. Without him, we are doomed to darkness and die without hope. To understand God's love and his care, we must turn to Christ. Jesus teaches us that God is good and in him found no evil. He is our creator and we are his creature. The entire chapter 10 of the fourth gospel draws our attention to this divine fact. We are God's own creature or treasure. By our own fault, we left him and went far away from his loving care and protection. In such of us, he came down and lived among us in and through Jesus, his beloved son. As a shepherd, care is sheep. So Jesus Christ came to save us and give his life as ransom for many. He becomes our good shepherd, and we are his sheep. Having said that, let's turn our attention to the Gospel of John chapter 10. The chapter can be classified under three broader sections. The first section explains the door to the sheep, 
The second section describes the good shepherd and his office. And the third section explains the, dis the discussion and clarification of Jesus' claim as the good shepherd to his hearers. Our reflection for this meditation falls on the second section, the good shepherd and his office. So let us reflect on the theme, Jesus is a good shepherd. As we meditate upon this thought further, let's bow down our heads and look to God in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come unto the throne of grace seeking for your mercy. Worries and loneliness faint our hearts and lead to uttermost corner in life. Our life is filled with darkness and threatens with danger. Holy Spirit God, lead us to the green pasture and help us to find life. In Jesus' name, Amen. As said earlier in the introduction, our focus for our meditation this morning is Jesus is our good shepherd. He is our good shepherd. The concept of shepherd is not new during the time of Jesus. In fact, quite a number of passages portray God as shepherd in the Old Testament. One of the profound descriptions of God as shepherd is found in the book of Psalm 23. It is well-known psalm to Jews as well as Christians. We do learn by heart, memorizing, ex reciting this psalm almost by every child and each day. Psalm 23.1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When God is our shepherd, we lack nothing. He cares for us well. In prophetical books like Jeremiah, Isaiah and Ezekiel, we find the concept of shepherd. The leaders of Israel were often described God's appointed shepherds. The office of the shepherd is to be watchful. You should care for sheep and lead the flock safely in the right direction. The shepherd must be fully aware of the struggles and life-threatening challenges that come along the way. The responsibility of the shepherd, therefore, is to pay personal attention and care for the flock intensely. Failing to do this work will destroy the flock and scatter sheep. God reminded the leaders of Israel and their selfish behavior and warned them quite a number of times for their indignant behavior. We could hear him crying. The cry of God was, and is, his sheep was scattered. Where care scattered? Wandered without shepherd. There was no one to search for them and care for them. Therefore, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 11, 12 says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock, when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they, uh, they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. It is God who took initiative to look after the lost sheep and scattered flock. As he promised, he sent his son Jesus to fulfill the heart quest of him, of God. Chapter 34, 23, God says, I will place over them one shepherd. I would like to repeat these words. Ezekiel 34, 23 says, I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them, he will tend them and be their shepherd. This is what exactly portrayed in the gospel of John chapter 10. But we have differences here. The differences are here. Jesus Christ is not just described as the shepherd. Rather, he is described as the good shepherd. Jesus Christ is not just shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Many factors ought to be recognized when we say Jesus as the good shepherd. St. John the Apostle did not use this superlative language for the sake of presenting Jesus and his mission to the public. The mission and heart thrust of Jesus indeed resembles exactly the heart of God. That's what we find. Jesus is our good shepherd because he cares for his sheep. 
good shepherd first starts searching for the lost sheep the intention of searching will be the outcome of love and care no shepherd can look after his flock unless he loves his sheep in order to comprehend the concept of shepherd and sheep the 12th century theologian thomas aquinas relates this in his commentary on the gospel of john he says god calls his people as his own sheep and god himself be the shepherd for them that's what we we find in the book of ezekiel 34 31 you my sheep the sheep of my pasture are people and i am your god declares the sovereign lord therefore jesus is seen as the good shepherd he left the 99 and went in search of the one the one which is prone to danger and death what might have motivated god to show interest in the lordship is it not his love and care for the sheep as one of the rules for saint benedictine says one should follow the lead of the good shepherd who left 99 sheep behind to search for the lost one none of us could have come closer to god i repeat none of us could come closer to god if jesus is not shown his love mercy and care for us we could have died in our sins the 12th century inf- influential church european churchman bernard of clairvaux believed that if god did not love us we have no hope the fallen helpless and were the people we need god's love he himself bernard himself claims that he experienced this in his life and witnesses about it second jesus is our good shepherd because he knows the sheep he knows the sheep the scripture portrays god as all knowing nothing is hidden from his sight everything clearly and transparently appears to him since he is omniscient he identifies his creation by calling the names in fact he gives them names he will not call them randomly just like that this is what we see in the book of psalms the psalmist acknowledges the unique characteristics of god and his relationship with his creation creation it is unique and amazing why it is unique and amazing because we need to see how god he relate himself with his creation he says we need to praise him and sing new songs to glorify we need to the we need to do this because he knows his creation and identifies them with the name he says psalm 147:45 god determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name he calls the stars by name he gave the name to stars therefore great is our lord and mighty in power is understanding as no limit if god gives name to the stars and planets how much more will he calls as by name i should warn you be careful there is a difference that needs to be noted when the world calls you and me by our names i repeat when the world calls you by by our names we find some differences we are identified by our profession by our possession and by our position and all the three p's that i have mentioned becomes a hallmark for us to identify okay people call us by these names i read a story long back about ceo of a reputed company the officials and staff used to wait for him at the airport for his arrival they received him with a flower bouquet others opened the car took care of him well by providing him good accommodation at five star hotels but when he came to the second time he noticed a huge difference he was waiting for his officials and staff to receive him with flowers but 
none of them were seen for his surprise. No car was sent. No hotel was booked. This surprised him. Now God reminded him and said, people were after you, cared you because of your position, because of your profession and your position. Do you know now what they call you? They name you and call you as ex-CEO. You are no more CEO. <laughs> you are named. You are identified as ex-CEO. However, I never call you as ex-child of mine. Amen. Would you please say amen? God said, I never, never call you. I never call you as my ex-child. You are still my child. You are still my child. This is what God is telling to you and me. Some of our situation right now might be the same, like the CEO. Sometimes we are confused by hearing people identify as with names and nicknames. They recognize as like bulky, short, thin, dark, lame, worst fellow, lazy fellow, good for nothing. These are the names they have given to some of us and so forth. Have you ever heard people telling, they say that, do you remember that lazy fellow? You don't call. The moment that they say, the lazy fellow, you understand, oh, he's, or he or she is referring to, referring to X, Y, Z person. See, when our health, when our profession, when our position, money gone, we are, we are counted as useless and good for nothing. God never identifies us like this. He calls us by name because he knows us. He branded and recognized us like my child, my daughter, my son. Whether you are working or not working, whether you are retired or still working, whether, whether you are good in education or not, whether you have job or not, whether, whether you are in good condition of good health and good, living in good condition or not, but God says, my child. God says, my daughter. God says, my son. But many a times we try to get rid of him and go far away from him, but still he came in search of us. Amen? He came in search of us. Third, Jesus, our good shepherd, he is willing to lay down his life to the sheep. If you have time, once you return home, please read John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. Quite a number of times the phrase is used, I lay down my life to the sheep. I lay down a number of times, quite a number of times. We, note, we need to note that Jesus came not just to search the lost sheep as mentioned in the synoptics, Matthew 18, 12 to 14. And he finds it, I tell you the truth, Matthew 18 says, 12, he is happier about that one sheep than about 99 that did not wander off. In Jeremiah 23, 3 says, I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will be fruitful and increase in number. Therefore, the mission of Jesus is in search for other sheep. Not just sheep. There, is, there are also other sheep. 15 says, Father knows me, and I know the Father, and lay down my life for the sheep. In verse 16, the same chapter uh, 10, John, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep, and I must bring them also. We need to understand the phrase from the light of the death and resurrection of Christ to save sinners. First, sheep, first Peter chapter 2.25 says, For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned 
to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. You return to the shepherd. He is your overseer. He is the one who cares. He is the one who loves you. Therefore, Christ is the door and Christ is the shepherd. When Christ claims the dual role, he meant to say that he does enter to, through himself first. Because he manifests himself and through himself knows the Father. We, however, enter through him because it is by him that we all led to happiness. Therefore, the office of a good shepherd is clarity. Sorry, it's charity. Thus he says, I laid down my life for the sheep. That's the office of good shepherd. No one can lay down his life for the sheep unless he cares and loves. He must look beyond the self. The shepherd must look beyond self. Beyond self-interest. Jesus Christ laid down his life to draw to his fall. This is what we find first epistles of John chapter 3, 16 says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Number four, Jesus is a good shepherd because he gives the sheep an eternal life. Jesus Christ gives the eternal life to his followers, followers that no one could snatch from his hand. The authority given to him by the Father, creator of the universe, therefore, God protects them from eternal punishment and distractions. William Barclay, Reverend William Barclay, comments, until Jesus came, people saw God either stranger or worst enemy. I repeat, until Jesus came, people saw God either stay as stranger or as worst enemy. It is Jesus who brought people closer to God. He is the door to enter in God's presence. In another sense, the shepherd is the door literally to sheep. Without him, they cannot access in or out. Finally, my dear church, what do we give in return uh, for such a good shepherd? Nothing can appease him unless we give ourselves to God. C.S. Lewis once wrote, God does not want something from us. He simply wants us. I repeat, God doesn't want something from us. He simply wants us. Therefore, I, do, I urge you this morning, listen to his voice. You can surely Hear him say, I love you. If you listen, his voice says, I love you. If you say, I have nothing left with me. I am empty. I lost my money. I lost my business, my profession, my family, my health, and so on. The world labeled me as useless. Friends called me or calls me as good for nothing and still others see that my life is over and it is finished. Allow me to say this. You have Jesus, the good shepherd, who laid his life for you and me. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, just thank you for letting me to know at this hour that I have you with me. In every situation, difficult times, you love me and care for me. You never abandon me. You have stimulated hope within me and assured me that I have life in you. Help God the Holy Spirit to listen to your voice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to invite the Mace family to come forward as we come to baptize Daniel Edward, whose mood has changed in the last few minutes. <laughs> if you could come forward and join me at the font, please.
I'm sure you all recognize one or two from the choir. Okay, great, as we come closer. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of the Church of the Epiphany and the whole Church of God, we greet you all in the name of the Lord, and we rejoice with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave himself to death on the cross and was raised again for the salvation of humankind. Baptism is a sacrament in which by repentance and faith we enter into the salvation. We are united with Christ in his death. We are granted forgiveness of sins. We are made members of his body, and we are raised with him to new life in the Spirit. Children who are too young to profess the Christian faith are baptized on the understanding that they'll be brought up as believers within the family of the church. As they grow up, they need the support of that family so that they may learn to live by trust in God. They need encouragement to be faithful in public worship and personal prayer, to come to confirmation and to continue in obedience to the commandments of God all the days of their life. Parents and godparents, Daniel Edward Mace, whom you brought for baptism, depends chiefly on you for the help he needs. Will you help and encourage Daniel by your prayers, by your example, and by your teaching? With God's help, I will. You present children for baptism as promised to bring them up to reject all that is evil. You would answer for yourselves and for your child. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy what God has created? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy what God has created? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you away from the love of God? I renounce them. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you into the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. We're now going to bless the water. Praise God who made the heavens and the earth, who keeps his promise forever. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan. We thank you for the gift of water to cleanse and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your son and raised him to life in triumph. Bless this water which your servant, who is to be washed in it, may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon Daniel to bring Daniel to new birth in the family of your church and raise him up with Christ to full and eternal life. For all might, majesty, authority, and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. I've got a very active baptismal font here at the moment. Parents and godparents, you must now in allegiance to Christ declare before God and his church the Christian faith into which Daniel Edward is about to be baptized and which will help him to live and grow, you to answer for yourselves and for Daniel. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Parents and godparents, will you by your own example and teaching bring up your child to live in obedience to God's laws as a loyal member of his church? With God's help, I will. What do you name this child? I present to you Daniel Edward Mace to be baptized. Daniel Edward? Oops. Aha, big boy. Have a little bit of a swim, yeah? Daniel Edward, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. There we go. All done. All done. Okay, there we go. The new hairstyle. Okay. Good. Good. Pass me the water.
Daniel, I sign you with the sign of the cross, the, the sign of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and continue his faithful soldiers and servants to the end of your life. Yeah. Is that a good mood now? Good. Haven't lost my touch yet. Okay. You like that, please? <laughs> Practicing for my grandchildren, don't worry. Shobas, the godparent. Christ our light. By baptism, Daniel, into Christ you pass from darkness to light. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Could the congregation please stand? Daniel Edward, God has received you by baptism into his church. Together, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. We are children of the same heavenly Father. We are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. Lord God, our Father, maker of heaven and earth, we thank you that by your Holy Spirit, this child, Daniel, has been born again into new life, adopted for your own, and received into the fellowship of your church. Grant that he may grow in the faith into which he has been baptized, that he may profess it for himself when he comes to be confirmed, and that all things belonging to the Spirit may live and grow in him, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptized in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, we're now going to welcome Daniel into the church as we sing welcome to the family. And I parade him around. Why? Because it takes a village to raise a child, and each one of you has a responsibility to help raise him. Follow on behind. He's in a good mood.
one, two. Starting to talk. Folks, why don't you link hands across the aisles as we pass the peace. I'll tell you what, I'm developing a very good right bicep here holding him. This is quite heavy. <laughs> We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Bless you all. Thank you. Ah, back to mum. Thanks, Laura. Bless you. <laughs> Folks, please be seated for the welcome and the announcements. Again, warm welcome to those visiting with us today, and uh, please do remember you're welcome to join us downstairs for a cup of tea and coffee after the service. If you need special prayers today, do be aware that we do have offer special prayers in the glass room on my left-hand side and in the broom cupboard at the back. So those are our two uh, pressure cookers for prayer. So if you'd like to have, be prayed over for something or to rejoice with something, please do go and be prayed over this morning during the communion service. Friday school is still on break, but they will be back next week. And so please do also remind others that Friday school and Epic Youth and all that starts up again from next week. We also will be confirming again, as we've been sharing um, at the end of May. So we are uh, and have opened a second series of teachings for confirmation. So please do register. We plan to start on the 1st of May. So please do, if you are over 12, preferably closer to 13 and older and you want to be confirmed, then please do uh, fill in the form so we can invite you to those sessions. We also are looking for acolytes, those that want to come and serve around the altar. And so we already have about six names. So please, in May, we'd like to start training. So please, if you haven't filled it in and you'd like to be part of it, please do join that as well. Bishop, as I said, will be here at the end of May, and we'll be doing the confirmations, and so we look forward to our new bishop when he comes next month. The thrift store, the sale continues in the foyer, so please go and relieve them of some stuff or bring stuff that you don't need at home, and we use the funds for those that are in need. So please do support us. We have at the center two vehicles now for sale, and uh, those that are interested, they're both Mitsubishi Pajeros, they're both 2010 models, very careful drivers from the Anglican Center, been driving them for the last 14 years. Um, I sound like a used car salesman. Um, but if you are interested, then please do speak with Stanley or Loud, and they are sealed bids, and the box, I think, will be placed at the security gate for those that are interested in buying one of those vehicles. And then is Debbie Allen here to share about the tea? Ah, oh, yes, comes Debbie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ladies. We are having our first tea party, and we are inviting all the ladies to come and join in. So far, we have seven persons who are hosting and what does that mean? It means that somebody is going to be um, inviting you. You're, you're going to be somebody who stays at the table and then you're going to host. You're going to be serving, you are going to be entertaining. We have a really, really good program lined up and it's going to be next week, Saturday, and it starts at three o'clock to five o'clock. Thus far, we have seven persons as hosts and we have enough people for seven tables, but we'd really, really love to have 10 tables and three more positions are open for host, and I'm sure somebody or 
three persons in the church, ladies in the church, are quite excited to be a part of this and you'll want to join us. So do feel free to come and see me at the end of church and um, um, you know, so I can tell you exactly what it is that you need to do and you know that you can just be a part of the first tea party we're gonna have. For those of you who don't necessarily want to be the host but you want to come, the QR code is on the screen. You can scan that and sign in. We will assign you to a table. Um, and for those of you who are planning on coming and you told us you're coming and you haven't yet signed up, please do so today because we would really, really love to be able to say who are the persons we're catering for, how many persons actually. So we're excited to have you. And please take along a friend, send, send the link to a friend to sign up too so we can have many, many ladies for the first one. Excited to host you. If you have not um, signed up yet, please do so. All right, thank you so very much. And I'm waiting at the back to see you at the end of the service. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much, Debbie. So ladies, please do join next week, Saturday afternoon. Also, our food drive is on the go as well. If you'd like to bring non-perishables to church, we do feed those many in the labor camps who are desperate. And so please do assist where you can. The Link communities are up and running. If you'd like to join one of those, please speak to Jaywant. The prison ministry, always looking for Bibles and Christian books. In fact, we go in, Stanley goes in on Monday into the prisons again for that ministry. And then Grace Fellowship Church is offering a teaching on the Psalms. And if you're interested, there's a registration link which you can follow if you'd like to go and join them when they teach into the Psalms. And we have at Evening with the Gideons this coming Saturday from 5 o'clock, is it? Quarter to 6. Chris, you here? Quarter to 6. So, and Uncle Deagle's here as well. So the two Gideons are here uh, to encourage us. So please do come. The Praise and Harmony singers will be singing again. And uh, there's going to be testimonies. Those of you that don't know who the Gideons are, if you look and you've ever been into a hotel room, you might have found a Bible there, and it's got a little stamp on it from the Gideons. So it's business people that sponsor Bibles and give them to schools and other institutions as well as hotels. So they will be having their meeting this coming Saturday. You all are welcome to come and be part of that at quarter to six on this coming Saturday. And then just finally, don't forget to join us after church for some tea and some coffee. We now move into the offertory and into the communion part of our service.
Let's say together. God, our strength and our salvation, receive all we offer you this day and grant that we who confessed your name and received new life in baptism may live in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You have fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, ever praising you and singing. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you revealed the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night that Jesus gave himself for all of us. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and after giving you thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant we shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb, and we rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption. Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favor on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with you and all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. brothers and sisters in Christ. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. If you eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and lives for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with great thanksgiving. If you are a baptized believer and you receive communion in your own church, you are welcome to receive communion in this church. The body of Christ.
We have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you, believe the gate of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who burst in from the grave, has won a glorious victory. Give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Are singing that wonderful hymn of the church, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
my brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia.